there's a guy on set whose name is Chris Hour, and he's the first AD. And if you asked Chris what this show was, he, he's from Virginia. He would say, well, the kids are having fun, and then a monster attacks, and then they beat the monster, and then the monster gets big, and then the kids get into a big machine, and then they beat the monster, and the world is safe again. And then they do it again next week. I don't know. Let's, let's go. Action! So that's, that's Power Rangers for you. There's a, there's a villain trying to constantly destroy the world, and we are the attitudinal teens, if that's a word, who just take him down. I worked at a company and as a private contractor and they would hook me up with jobs where I go to children's parties and do like treasure hunts and and birthday parties and then we would do big events sometimes too and uh, big performances and stage shows and one of our biggest characters was Power Rangers <laughs> so I would go play Power Rangers at like little kids parties before I ever actually booked Power Rangers and uh, kids loved it I mean those kids are the best I actually watched the original Mighty Morphin when I was young, when it first came out, so I was familiar about Power Rangers when I auditioned for it. Um, and also, the Pink Ranger was my favorite Ranger, Kimberly. But actually, I didn't even go in for the Pink Ranger, I went in for the Yellow Ranger. The first audition I went in on, I brought my, um, brought my Boken, which is like a practice katana, a wooden katana, and I brought it in, and as soon as I walked in, I was like, yeah, I was the only guy to bring a sword. This is awkward. Well, whatever. Let's just do it, you know? And so I went in the room and I did a whole bunch of weird tricks and they were like, wow, you can play with a sword. And I was like, yeah, I can. And then it all went from there. Morphers, power cards, megazords? All of this tech, how do we use it? All will be revealed in time. If the Earth is under attack, and you think we're the ones to protect it, we're in. Megaforce, your mission starts now. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm worried already. You selected well, Tensu. They'll be fine. Day one was the scene in episode one with the classroom, where all of us are sitting there, and Noah, you know, she's wrong, 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 wrong. And uh, Jake you know, taps him on the shoulder, just chill out, bro. And that scene was the first thing we shot, if I remember correctly. And um, it's a whole bunch of Kiwi kids in the classroom. So we got in there, and the first thing I felt was like, oh my gosh, we are the only Americans in this country. This is it. We're the Americans. And so it became synonymous to be American and a Power Ranger all of a sudden. So I was like overcome with this feeling of I'm a superhero and a patriot and I'm gonna fight for my country and you know it was very noble in my head and then the first time you put on the spandex and it's super tight you know you stand there and you go wow this is what it's like to be a patriot all right let's do it every day <laughs> something big is clearly going on here so be ready for anything then what are we waiting for right it's more of a time the five of us, Drew, Christina, Ciara, John, and me, all lived in the same house. I was like, we should not live together because it's going to be Power Rangers Real World New Zealand. This is what's going to happen, guys, if we live together. So we all actually got to know each other on and off set. We'd work with each other, we'd come home, and we'd hang out with each other. We got close really fast. Yeah, we became a family. I can't believe it. Creepbox is actually gone. Now I finally have a chance to relax a little bit. Yeah, if that isn't a reason to celebrate, God, I don't know what is. Celebration with a capital? Yeah, boy! <laughs> nice moves, bro. Azeem, <laughs> if you have a question, you go to Azeem. <laughs> Azeem knows everything, so just go to Azeem if you ever have any questions. Jake is out there, man. He's totally optimistic about life. I share that quality with him. 
and he's just got this super confidence about him that doesn't really make sense. Like, he shouldn't be that confident about everything, but he is, and it works. You are so beautiful. Christina is probably the most like her character because uh, Emma is very reserved most of the time and when she speaks out it's usually to say something that alters the course of the episode and she's very much like that in real life. She's very quiet, she's very reserved but when she does come out and say something it's usually it's got some sort of importance to it. Since you have met adversity in your life with great skill, you shall be the Red Ranger and like the dragon you will serve as the team's leader. There must be a mistake here. I'm new in town. There is no mistake. You have been chosen because of your skills and character. Drew, we call him Drew. On set, he's really, really quiet. And then all of a sudden, he'll just come out with saying, I don't know, something that's just so bizarre and shocking and really, really funny out of like out of nowhere, out of the blue. And it's just so, he, he's really funny, but you wouldn't expect it. It's just like all of a sudden he hits you with something and you're just like, what? Did you just say that? You know, I guess Drew is, is quite a bit like his character. Troy is really into physical fitness. He's very engaged and he's very focused. And so is Drew. Drew is extremely focused. He's got, I think, like three businesses or something like that that he owns. A nonprofit organization, a clothing line, and a, and a, a business. And he's opening up a, a health center in, in um, Pennsylvania. And like, he's very focused in life. And he's doing all of this while he's doing all the Power Rangers related work. So it's really impressive. I don't think he sleeps very much. And he might have one of those things from Harry Potter that like turns back time. Like, choo, 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 choo. So that's a possibility. I haven't ruled it out. I could carry your books for you if you want. Wow. How retro of you. <gasps> the least like their character is probably Ciara. Because Ciara is very bubbly and she's very friendly. It always seemed to me that Gia had this like edge to her. Like she's always trying to get ahead in life. And Ciara's just not that way. She's really nice. Aw, oh, Ciara was my rock. We shared a trailer. When I was having a really hard time, I'd lean on her and she was really there for me. And she's awesome. She's such a sweetheart. Gia just beats Jake down the whole season. You know, the whole season. Oh, I get turned out so many times. It's like real life on screen. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm, I'm never gonna be strong enough. You, you know, you were always the gung-ho guy and I was always the, you know, slightly nerdy type. Slightly. John is really, really good at impressions. He's hysterical. He made everybody on set, everybody in the cast and crew laugh so much. He's so fun. He, everybody's actually really funny, but John, John has a talent. <laughs> they look like they've been waiting for us. Then let's not disappoint them. Before we started shooting the first season, they did two weeks of training in New Zealand when we first got there, a physical training. But throughout the whole series, every day that we were on set with them, they would teach us new things and we'd learn new um, choreographed fights. And it was really, really, really cool. I had a lot of experience coming into Power Rangers in, with stage combat and I'd done jujitsu and a little taekwondo and stuff. And so the kicking came a little more naturally. I've done a lot of parkour, so the rolling and the reactions and the jumping stuff, all that was, it came very easily to me. But I still had to work at it because they were like, they were pros. We have to help them. Right. Ah! Don't hurt them. Just get them to come after you and tire them out. Ah! 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 Once they get tired, ah! 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 it'll be easier to round them up and quarantine them. Ah! Ah! Kazu, the main guy, he was kind of our, our head trainer. There was Kazu and then there'd be Masaki and, and Yuji were the two directors. And Kazu had a shoulder thing, right? Because, you know, he messed it up doing a triple front flip like the rest of us. And then I asked him one day, can you even do a cartwheel? And he said, 
um, no, no. So I don't use hands. I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, I just do aerial. I was like, really? Can I see? And he goes, sure. <laughs> you know? So that's who we learned from. Gosei told us the Morphers will give us power. Let's use them. Follow my lead. It's Morphin time. Go, go, Mega Boy! The full morphing sequence, which we never, I guess I don't want to say never, but I'm pretty sure if it happened, it was only like once or twice. Got to do the whole thing beginning to end. It's nine moves, which is not a lot of moves, but we got to do them all in sync. <laughs> so one person messes up on any of those nine moves. Now we got to do it all over again. The hardest part is getting the card in the morpher because there's a bit where, you know, you go here and hold the card up so that you can see it. And then you have to go like this and the card like in the morpher. And then they come, okay, cut. So, and you just hold it. And somebody will come up and put a little piece of sticky tape there. And then we push the card down to stick on it, but it's gotta be there already. And then, okay, yeah! <laughs> it really does make you feel like a superhero. Like I love that whole thing we do. But that morpher, and you would hold, you get so into it, you'd hold it so tight. And the way it's made is like when you hold it, it indents into your hands. The morphers, have a, a personality of their own. They're also very large. So you pull it out and some of them, the mouth piece would come all the way out. And some of them you'd close it and it would stay in, but it would fall down. So I don't even know how many takes there are of this. There's gotta be hundreds of all five of us going, ha! And just one person's mouth falls open. <laughs> You just go, oh, cut. Okay, let's do it again. Come on. And they go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because it was usually Christina. It was. <laughs> or I'd be the slowest. Or <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had Morpher problems. I still loved it, though. It's a love and hate relationship with my Morpher. But when you really needed them to work, they did. There was, there was bits where we would have to do click, ha, and then there'd be a massive explosion. In a shot like that, they're gonna spend like 30 minutes setting up, right? Cause they gotta place the wires, they gotta fill the tanks with gas. They usually have the bombs pre-made. And then there's a whole process whereby everybody gets a safety speech. We get walked in from like all the way around. You know, it's very controlled so that nobody gets hurt. So you set it like 30 minutes setting up that shot. If that morpher had opened on that thing, that's, that sucks. That would have sucked. But it never did. Those were the times where it's it stayed good. So you got to give the morphers that. <laughs> All right, open up and say ah. Uh... Open up what? Right, your mouth doesn't open. Ep sixteen, Rico. He kicks a soccer ball past our heads, and it flies by at robotic speed and goes whoosh. And to get that effect of wind, they have this. It's like, it's like one of the snowblower machines. So when you turn the thing on, it blows air at like 60 miles an hour or something. And so they pointed it right at our face, like a foot away, action, whoosh, and it just blasts your cheeks, you know. Rangers, morph now! What, why? Morph, morph, morph! You heard him. It's morphin' time! It started! Season 21 was a real treat. There's going to be a lot of surprises and a lot of people that are going to come together and like really, really fight those bad guys to save the Earth. So, I mean, I think the fans are really excited about that battle. The writers for season two got to know us a little bit better uh, while we were shooting season one, which was pretty much already written by the time we got there. And so season two was written a lot more for us as opposed to season one. So to me, it all felt a lot better. It felt very, um, the whole thing felt very natural, very fluid. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. They're really, really going to be happy, I think, hopefully. Hold hands, everyone. We wish that our world will soon live in peace and harmony. 
and that our planet will one day be free of harm and pollution. When I got told that I booked this, it was such a cluster of emotions, I, I, I hardly knew what to think. And now, being on the tail end of it all and looking back, it just was such a positive experience. It was, it's probably, it's changed my life, you know, it's changed my life for the better. To be a part of the Power Ranger legacy, I just feel really lucky to be given the opportunity to be a role model to all these young kids, to be able to tell these stories that teach them about friendship and teamwork and confidence and about standing up for, you know, what you believe in. I got to go to New Zealand and shoot Power Rangers. That's it, you know. That has changed me for life. So I I just um I really hope I really hope everybody loves it. I really hope it 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 you know makes everybody smile and keeps everybody as happy as it made me. Are you ready? Yes, here we are. My name is Azim Rizik. I play Jay Calling, the Black Ranger.